What's going on YouTube? Giasno right here. So in today's video we're talking about Pangu's latest talk at Mosec, which is going to be about SEP or Secure Enclave Processor. Now this is very important for the jailbreak community and for the downgrade community and we're going to get into why. This video is brought to you by Wondershare and their software WhatsApp Business Transfer, which allows you to transfer your WhatsApp or WhatsApp business conversations from your computer to your device and so on. Check it out in the link below. So recently the CheckRain team posted this picture in here with the Pengu logo and of course an arrow pointing to Secure Enclave. Now what exactly is the Secure Enclave and what is Pengu? Now if you don't know Pengu, they were a jailbreak team in the past, well they're actually security researchers, but they used to create the Pengu jailbreak which was available for iOS 7, iOS 8, iOS 9, all the way up to 9.3.3 which was the last jailbreak we've seen from Pengu. Now all their jailbreaks were completely flawless and they were very very good, I mean extremely good jailbreak and some of them were even untethered. In fact, most of them were actually untethered. And the SEP or Secure Enclave Processor has been talked about before. In this talking here, demystifying the Secure Enclave Processor, there might have been many other talks, but this one I know for sure has been one of the most in-depth talks about that. But what exactly is the Secure Enclave Processor? Well, the Secure Enclave Processor is the part of the chip that Apple uses, for example, the A7, A12, A11, and so on. It's actually a core in that chip which handles your touch ID, your face ID and everything related to cryptography on your device. And this is actually important because this prevents us from properly doing any downgrades we want because we cannot downgrade the Secure Enclave processor. If you ever tried to restore your iPhone with TSS Saver blobs or whatever with your blobs that were saved, you probably heard this before, the SEP may not be compatible or the Secure Enclave processor may not be compatible from a version to another. The reason we even need that compatibility is because SEP hasn't been really broken and hasn't really been hacked before. So we still rely on whether the latest version available, for example 13.5.1 right now, has the SEP compatible with whatever version you're trying to downgrade to. And if it's not compatible, there's not much we can do. And really not a lot of things have been known about SEP until this uh, talking here posted by Sarji Mand, Matthew Solnik and David Wong. They had this talk back in 2016 and it was a very, very very good talk. It talked a lot about the Touch ID, about SEP, how it works, how it interprets the messages it gets, how it communicates with the rest of the system, and most importantly how it's completely isolated from the rest of the system. So even if you pawn the boot room like we did with the uh, checkmate, you would still not be able to pawn the SEP that easily. So with this introduction in mind, you can see how tricky the SEP is. It's actually a particularly hard to break thing and nobody actually managed to hack it properly to this point. And this brings me to the point of this video. After being somehow silent on the iOS stuff for a while, the Pengu jailbreak team comes back at the Mosec 2020, which is basically the mobile security conference 2020, which they actually organize with Power of Community and they will have a talk. And their talk is going to be about, guess what? SEP. So if you go here on the last speaker in here, it says, quote, attack secure boot of SEP. And they see in here, quote, in this topic, we will reverse the SEP ROM or the SEP read-only memory to understand the initializing process of SEP. More specifically, we will detail the messages between SEP and AP or application processor, as well as how the shared memory is set up. Meanwhile, Checkmate exploit allows us to execute our code during iBoot to talk to SEP for testing. And at last, I will reveal some vulnerabilities for old devices which could enlarge the attack surface of secure boot of SEP. Now this is actually quite massive because SEP hasn't exactly been tackled a lot in the past. As I said, aside from this talking here, which details the important design of the SEP, you know, basically what kind of um, ARM core it is and what it does and stuff like that, not a lot is known about it and definitely we do not have any vulnerabilities for SEP. But apparently Pangu will actually release a SEP vulnerability, although for older devices, which can increase the attack surface for SEP. Now, while that may not exactly be useful right from the bat for downgrade, it can help to actually develop tools in the future, or it can help to actually understand more how SEP works, so we can understand how to start breaking it. Because as I said, SEP compatibility is actually a big 
problem when it comes to downgrades and it's actually what keeps us from being properly able to downgrade and of course that and the uh, base band but the base band may and may not be a problem as it is the SEP. SEP handles the passcode, SEP handles touch ID, face ID, the decryption and encryption of the phone and basically anything cryptography related so if you don't have SEP your phone wouldn't basically work and if we have vulnerabilities for it to be able to break it and to hack it that would definitely be cool even if for the older devices because that can help us understand better how that very isolated SEP works. So yeah I'm looking forward for Pangu's talk this is going to be massive because it's about one of the most incredibly hard to hack things on iOS and in fact SEP remains the thing that hasn't even been hacked to this date. The boot room has been hacked, the iBoot has been hacked but SEP no way. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for watching. I am Geosnow. Till the next time, subscribe to stay updated and peace out.